Hello class, this is section 2.3 and in this video we are going to go through a heat equation example where we have to use the Fourier series. So we have a heat equation on a rod of length L with the boundary conditions set at zero. This time we have an initial condition that is a constant pi. So remember the last example we had the initial condition was just a sum of signs, and now ours isn't. So we can see how we can use the Fourier series here to solve that problem. So again, we start with the product solutions. As you may recall, product solutions are solutions of the form uxt equals fx times gt. And we know that we can find that gt is going to be e minus n pi over l squared kt and fx is equal to sine n pi x over l for n 1 2 3 and so on all the positive integers again recall that by plugging in the product solution uxt equals fxgt into the heat equation formula, we reduce the differential equation for the heat equation into two equations, one that we can solve using separation of variables, which is the g solution, and one which we solve using the eigenvalue method, which is the f solution. So the product solutions are of the form unxt equals e minus n pi over l squared kt times sine n pi x over l. So we need to figure out how we can get the initial condition u equals pi. We have to, find, to figure out how to write pi as a sum of signs of the form sine n pi x over l. Because if you may recall, taking the initial conditions, setting t equals 0, will turn these product solutions into sine terms of the form sine n pi x over l. So we need to use the Fourier's theorem here. So pi is equal to a sum n equals 0 to infinity bn sine n pi x over l. This is by Fourier's theorem. It says that any function can be written in this form. And now we just need to find out what the bn are. And from the Fourier, th Fourier theorem video, we know that we just have to find bn is equal to 2 over l times the integral on 0 to l of pi sine n pi x over l dx is x. This isn't a difficult calculation to do, so 2 for l pi, I can pull the pi out there because it's constant, and the integral of sine n pi l x is going to be minus cosine m pi over l x times l over m pi going from x equals 0 to x equals l because that were, that those were our boundary conditions for the original integral. We can then simplify all the constants and we just end up with 2 over m. The pi's cancel out the L's cancel out and we just have 2 over M over there and we just have minus cosine M pi X over L going from X equals 0 to L but this is of course just going to be 2 over L minus cosine M pi because we're plugging in L here so you just have M pi and plus 
1 because cosine 0 is 1. That is our value for Bm, if you may recall. And now all we have to do is to plug it back into Fourier's theorem. Pi is equal to the sum. We know that um, Bn is this term. It's going to be from m equals 1 to infinity um, to m minus cosine m pi over, there's no over L, sorry, it's just m pi plus 1 multiplied by sine m pi x over L. Actually, let's just, make, let's, just, let's just change it back to n since that's what I wrote down in the first place. So let's just replace all the m's with n's. Just to make it consistent, it doesn't matter what letter you use. Uh, let's simplify this expression a little bit. It looks a bit nasty. But it's, you can note that cosine of n pi is 1 for n even and cosine of n pi is minus 1 for n odd. This means that if n is even, we just get minus 1 plus 1 here, and this entire term disappears. When n is odd, this is just a 2. So we can ignore all the cases when n is even. So we can say we're just summing the case from n equals 1 to infinity if n odd. And when n odd, this is, because, this is a 2, and the sign remains, and when n is even, the term disappears. So we have this, and this of course simplifies to the sum of n equals 1 and odd 4 over n sine n pi x over l. And that's our expression for pi. So we can, we wrote down our initial condition our initial condition over here in terms of a sum of signs just as we required and now it's uh, not too difficult to figure out what our general solution should be so if you may remember our general solution will be written in as a sum of product solutions let's go back to the product solutions so these are the product solutions over here and we want um, and we want to replace all the sign terms with the un terms. So we have here n equals 1 and odd again infinity 4 over n instead of sine n pi x over l because the initial condition of the product solution is sine n pi x over l. So we replace this with un. And this is exactly our solution to the original problem. Uh, let's just write out the un and four. So n, n over one and odd infinity four over n times un and un is of course just going to be e minus n pi over l squared kt times sine n pi x over l. And if we look at that, that is exactly the solution of our original problem that satisfies that particular initial condition and I hope you can see the power of the Fourier method in figuring out the proper initial condition there.